Hey, my name is Justin, and I want to share a story from my senior year of high school. I was 17 at the time, and I didn't believe in the paranormal or anything like that. In fact, I thought ghosts were just made-up lies and tales that people invented because they were too afraid to admit the reality of their experiences or the possibility of mental disorders they didn't want to face. I always laughed at shows like Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters when my friends used to watch them on weekends. One night, we were all heading to a party, taking the back roads. I remember my friend Mike used to drive on this road where Native Americans once performed rituals. He said they had cursed the land, and he would try to scare us by turning off the lights while we were driving. The only thing that scared me at the time was the possibility of a sharp turn and hitting a tree. He did this a few times and said that a Native American lady had died on this road. He claimed that if we turned off the car headlights on a full moon night, she would be visible to us. As we drove down that road to the party, he turned off the lights. I remember passing the spot where I had heard about several accidents happening, and I kept an eye out on the side of the road. As he turned off the lights, I saw someone about 15 feet away from the passenger door. It wasn't a woman. It looked more like a man wearing a long-sleeved flannel shirt. I got a good look at him as he stared at me while we were going approximately 30 miles per hour. My knee-jerk reaction was to think that it was just someone walking on the side of the road in the middle of the night. I didn't say anything to my friends because I didn't want Mike to stop, and Stephen was too drunk to handle the situation appropriately. The night went on as usual at the party. I only had a couple of beers, and being a bit overweight, I wasn't feeling buzzed at all. Mike dropped me back home around 2 a.m., and I went straight to bed feeling extremely tired. I had a vivid dream that I can still remember to this day. I found myself meeting the man in the flannel shirt at the same spot where I had seen him earlier. He asked me why I was visiting him in my dreams, and when I asked him who he was, he said that even if he told me, I would never believe what happened to him. Frustrated, I turned and ran down the dirt road away from him. As I ran, I could hear him calling out, Come back! Come back! I need to tell you something! I woke up the next morning, and what was weird was that I was wearing my own flannel shirt from my closet. I remembered coming home, taking off my shirt, and falling asleep as I always do. I didn't think much of it at the time and brushed it off. The next day at school, I told Mike about what I had seen and the dream I had about the man in the flannel shirt. Mike thought it was strange since he was a big believer in the paranormal and supernatural. That same night, I went to sleep shirtless after throwing my shirt in the laundry. When I woke up the next day, I couldn't find my shirt in the washer. The only explanation I could think of was that my parents had taken it out and placed it somewhere else. I really liked that shirt, especially since it had a slipknot patch on the left shoulder that my friend Megan had sewn for me. A couple of weeks later, I decided to drive down that same road alone around 10 p.m. As I approached the spot where I had seen the man, I turned down the volume of the stereo and parked on the side of the road. When I got out to take a closer look, I saw my flannel shirt lying on the ground with the slipknot patch still on the left shoulder. That sent chills down my spine. Suddenly, my headlights flickered on and off, and I heard a distinct man's voice saying, Don't leave me here! Come here and stay with me! To my horror, the voice sounded exactly like my own. Terrified, I jumped back into my car and sped off. As I drove away, I heard the loudest thump on the side of my car as if someone had thrown a rock at it. I never made it to the party that night and I was left terrified and confused by what had just happened. I didn't know how to explain the presence of my shirt, or the voice that sounded like mine. 
I never told Mike about the experience, keeping this terrifying secret to myself. And tonight, for the first time, I'm sharing this story with the public. I don't believe in the paranormal or ghosts, but after that experience, I just don't know how not to believe in them.